Hi all. Our game today will be the World Championship game played yesterday between Kramnik and Anand. It was quite a solid draw. It kicked off with d4 by Kramnik and Anand replied with the Slav system. So the Slav is characterised with this c6 move. And now, unfortunately for the spectators of the game, Kramnik decided to take on d5. And it's this symmetrical pawn structure which can really result in quite dull positions. Unfortunately, after bishop f4, we also saw now an attempt at symmetry by Anand, just playing symmetrical moves to white. So here we have the bishops just facing each other, and white now continues the symmetry with knight f3, so the knights are also Im imitating each other. So, after e6 the symmetry continues, but now finally, a semi-exciting move. Queen b3 targeting that b7 pawn. So how does black defend the b7 pawn? If queen d7, this wouldn't be as good as the game though. Queen d7, knight e5, and white has a nagging pressure here. For example, knight takes e5 would be a bit of a disaster. After d takes e5, the knight moving, and now bishop b5 skewing the queen to the king. So what Anand did was a very sensible move in the circumstances. Queen c8 also would be an inadequate here, I believe, because it would be uncomfortable on the c file. So, for example, queen c8, rook c1, and white has a nagging edge again. Or is there something even more accurate here, perhaps? Maybe knight h4. So anyway, Anand continued after queen b3 with a very solid move, bishop b4. So he doesn't mind giving up his dark square bishop here. And... White continued with bishop b5. So again, we have almost virtual symmetry, with the exception of the queen being on b3. Black castled, and after bishop takes c6, bishop takes c3, queen takes c3. Black now played rook c8, so using that pin on the bishop, and in effect sacrificing a pawn now as the game continues. We're going to see that there's a pawn sacrifice involved in this. So after knight e5, Black now seemingly has a dangerous position. You know, he can't take that bishop on c6. Let's have a look. Take the bishop on c6. f3, actually. So not knight takes c6, but f3. And basically, this is a horrible backward pawn on that semi open c file. So really, Anand wanted to avoid this position. So what he did in this position was knight g4. So temporarily, leaving white a piece up, but the bishop on c6 is not going anywhere. So Kramnik took on g4, and after bishop takes g4, now Kramnik went in for a pawn with queen b4. So black can't really take with the b pawn here, because he'll be left with that horrible c6 pawn. It would be positionally a bit worse for him, and he may even have some losing chances. So Anand actually just played rook takes c6, sacking that b7 pawn and now instead of queen a5 check black played queen c8 so let's have a look at queen a5 check why that would be inadequate b4 and now queen a4 to protect the rook now say white castles maybe this is okay actually for black it's only a small advantage for white here. For example, bishop e2 and now bishop a6. Small advantage for white only. Because rook fc8 and black has adequate um, pressure on the c-file again, like in the game continuation. So basically, after queen takes b7, queen c8 was played though, instead of queen a5 check. And white took on c8. Now let's say he took the pawn on a7. Then rook c1 is actually a mating two here. Because after rook takes c1, queen takes c1 is mate. So white's got to be a little bit careful. He actually just took the queen, and now he can't play king d2 because he'll get mated in another silly way. Let's have a look at this. Rook c c2 check. If king d3, then bishop f5 mate. And if king e1, he's losing one of his rooks. Because he has to take the rook here, because this will be mating. So basically... Sorry, not bishop f5, bishop e2, and that will be mate. So basically, white did the right thing by just simply castling here. 
and again we have a really level position. After a a5 though, it seems you know Black's maintaining some pressure on that C file, the occupation. But you know how is he going to get his pawn back? White now played f3, and after Bishop f5, there's another semi-interesting or relatively interesting event of this game is White playing for e4. So Rook f e1, f e1 preparing e4. After Bishop g6, now Kramnik played b3. So, kind of a prophylactic move against rook c2. But um, he's gearing up for e4. Now f6 was played. And now finally e4. So it seems to be a little bit controversial, weakening the d-pawn. You know, which for, for rook d8 to be tempting. So after d takes fe, rook d8 was actually played. So white defends the d-pawn. And now black gets the pawn back with rook c2, going after the pawn. White's though plays e5, so really he's trying to cement that e6 weakness, but really because of the opposite coloured bishops here, both sides are just, you know, they have minimal winning, winning chances, it's going to be a draw, almost certainly. After fe, bishop takes e5, black finally regains the pawn, and now white plays rook a1, so he's targeting the a5 pawn. The rooks come off, after rook d5, now rook c1. White's got a little bit of nagging pressure, but it's really quite harmless because of the opposite colour bishops. After rook d7, rook c5. Black just defended the pawn with rook a7. And now white traded off the rooks. And we have here the exchange of prisoners, as Nimzovich would say. So the a5 prisoner is exchanged for the b3 prisoner. And with that, the game was agreed drawn. They agreed a draw. Okay, um... Let's have a quick overview and summary. So it was a Slav defence, an exchange variation, and it's a very symmetrical position. The possibility of some excitement after Queen b3, but uh, Black played very accurately with Bishop b4, and now we saw a very interesting, or relatively interesting, I would say, um, move. Knight g4, just leaving for the moment the Bishop on c6, pinned to that Queen on c3, and basically. The opposite colour bishops here mean that uh, black can sac easily sacrifice a pawn, especially as he has c file pressure, so he's got enough compensation here. And now we saw white playing for e4, so e4 was another relatively interesting event of the game. Now black regained the pawn, and then finally we saw kind of exchange of prisoners, the, the pawn on a5 swapped for the pawn on b3 and the game was agreed drawn. Let's hope for a more exciting game today. If you're not already aware we're covering this match on letsplaychess.com but uh, we're using a, a relay from ChessDom so that's a very good site and um, but you know we're discussing it at letsplaychess.com so if you want to join us on the chess forum there for today's game starting shortly you know please be my guest and um, I'll be there to answer any questions if you have any. Okay, thanks very much. See you on YouTube or on Let's Play Chess.com. Thanks very much.